Hi guys, welcome to Vintage Van Life. Now, I know on my last episode it ended on a, quite a sad note, but I'm going to be looking at my ignition system and seeing if I can figure out what the fault is as to why I don't have a spark. But before I do that, I'm going to start things off on a good note. So, since Christmas, I went and saw my um, colleagues, my former colleagues from Warwick Castle for New Year's. <laughs> We did a secret Santa and I want to share with you guys what I got. So a very special shout out to George who had me as her secret Santa. And here is present number one of two that I received, this beautiful brass knight. So George was informed by my friend Mark that I'm a huge fan of anything made of brass and working at the medieval castle of course, this is a wonderful reminder of the time that I spent at Warwick Castle. And gift number two was probably the most Alex gift that could be found, and it is this. A beautiful vintage car coat hanger, which is made of brass as well, which will suit my van to a T. Quite often in my van we're having to hang things up in random places where they really shouldn't be hung. For example, on my porthole. So I was thinking, for the time being, or permanently, this beautiful vintage car coat hanger could hang just here so I can utilize this space for hanging coats and everything. There we go. Lovely jubbly. Hey Jolie. Hi. When you're in vans do you reckon it's always good to utilize the space as efficiently as possible? 100%. We have an example right here. How many biscuits can you fit <laughs> in the biscuit jar? <laughs> Would you like a custard cream? I'd love one. It's time to fill up my diesel heater's tank. So I bought the one where the tank is part of the heater because this vehicle's petrol, so I wouldn't be able to tap into the fuel tank because that would be quite explosive. So I have to take this slat out. It's a bit of a pain, um, but it only takes a few minutes. Take the slat out and then I can just take off this cap here and it will just take five liters of diesel and that will last some time. Hey Jolie. Hi, hi. Have you missed the diesel heater? Oh, I have. Oh man, it gives out such a good heat. So it's just coming up to temperature now, and it's blowing oh, nice, oh. lots of hot air out of here, which is great. So. I know people told me that it rains a lot in Wales, but there is a problem with living in a van. I've never really been one to complain about the rain, but when you live in a van, the trouble is you're in a very confined space because in the summer, when you go down to the beach and you park up, it feels like you've got the world at your feet. But as soon as you have to close the door and you're inside this small space, in the winter it can feel a little bit claustrophobic because everything gets wet and every time you step outside you get drenched you have to dry all your stuff and everything and every time you just want to step outside and also I'm finding quite a lot of problems with wet inside the camper van so let's do a little tour here to explain so I've used wooden cladding as the interior design this is actually really good because the wood will absorb the moisture because us humans let out a huge amount of moisture when we breathe with the condensation and this will absorb it breathe it will dry out but anything that is metal or plastic will literally get absolutely soaking wet so if I run my finger along anything that's metal it's all dripping everywhere this is a perspex window it's constantly wet down here is constantly dripping I've got this curtain down here just so it doesn't drip all over my bed you can just see along here look this is every day every second of every day it's just absolutely sodden with water 
as well as that inside my cupboards at the back where it's just the insulation and then the metal framework in here that is absolutely soaking wet and the other day I actually found mold forming so I've been trying to dry it out in here using uh, spray to clean the mold but you can see in the corner here where it started to form and also as well I think a lot of the water um, condenses on this metal pole here which drips down and I've noticed today that the wood in this corner here is absolutely soaking wet as well which means if I leave that or don't cure it it will rot it will get moldy and just really not good now my van isn't finished by a long shot so for example if I go into the toilet and shower cubicle let me show you how bad the wet gets in here so this is the roof inside what will be the shower ironically a wet room but there's a huge amount of exposed metal here and this is absolutely soaking wet. You can just see it's just pouring off there and it's causing the wood to soak up the moisture as well, which really isn't great. The insulation gets a little bit damp, but it's mostly the metal. So really anything that's metal needs to be covered. But the trouble is because it's wet at the moment, I might actually have to wait till spring to when it heats up and gets warm before I actually cover this because if I close it in when it's wet even if I dry it off any moisture that's in there won't be able to escape and it's going to cause me a lot of trouble. If there's one thing I could have changed when I was building this van in the first place I would have done the cladding all the way around from the walls and ceiling first and then done the framework particularly for the cupboards so when you open them it's all cladded and sealed properly with no exposed metal um, but it's a bit late now, I'm going to have to just kind of do it in a fiddly kind of way. It's very difficult at the moment now to try and sort out these problems whilst it's the middle of winter in South Wales where it's raining a lot. Um, so, God, I don't really know where to start to be honest. The other thing is that's been always difficult ever since I started this series is living in a van that I'm building at the same time because at the moment it'd be very difficult for me to do any carpentry because outside it's pouring with rain and if I brought the carpentry inside and started sawing I'm gonna end up with sawdust and uh, stuff everywhere and you know we've got the food prep area the beds and everything it's just a nightmare so what I might have to do is just knuckle down working earning some money until spring and then when it does start to dry up crack on with the van then it's been a few days later and basically what I've done so far to deal with the damp apart from leaving these cupboards open and using some cloths and things to soak up the moisture which has seemed to have worked it's dried out the wall down here uh, this one I've just started uh, clearing out some uh, early forms of mold I've used a kind of bleachy spray dried it off and the candle is in there because it actually helps dry it out a bit obviously I won't leave that on when I'm not here so really the other thing that I need to focus on is trying to get the vehicle running. So what I need to do is isolate the problem. What has failed on the ignition system? Right, it's a very cold morning and I've decided to start doing some tests with uh, my ignition system. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take the coil and the distributor out and set them up on the workbench with a battery. Um, basically doing a test to see if I can isolate what the problem is. If everything down here works fine, that would suggest that maybe it's a fault with the wiring, possibly from the ignition key. This is what I've got to figure out. Work on my van is going to have to stop temporarily because I've got to go back to Sussex briefly, Jolie has to go back to Hailing Island. Obviously, we're not going to be going in my camper van. Instead, we're going to go in one of my favourite vehicles of all time. We will be going in my legendary vehicle, Doug, the Reliant Rialto van. We're all loaded up and good to go. You ready to go, Jolie? Ah, Who's this? <laughs> I don't know if she but yeah, usually she's a bit shy. I'm gonna call her a sheep. <laughs> Let's hit the road.
We've just pulled over for a quick bite to eat. I'm having a Subway, but let's show you what Jolie's having. What have you got there, Jolie? Well, I couldn't let it go to waste, but Sarah was very kind. A roast dinner for <laughs> two? Look at the size of it. I feel like Joey or friends. I won't be eating it all, don't worry. Yeah, you will. <laughs> Ready for fish and chips? Look at it, they're ripped up in the chips, son. <laughs> Hi guys, thank you so much for watching. Now in the next episode, hopefully I'll actually get round to fixing the ignition on my camper van, so I'll see you then.